Hello everyone, Sergio here from PyroDrone.com. Today I'm very excited to show you guys our latest edition of the Hyperlite Racing Frame, the Floss 3.0. So let's see what you get in the bag. So we get one, two, three, four, five arms. Obviously you don't need five arms. We give you one extra spare. These are five millimeter thick carbon fiber and five inch. This is the five inch. So one, two, three, four, five. Five arms. Get a sticker. That can be anything. Can be sanded, hyperlite, uh, probably one of those ugly face Dr. Pyro stickers. We usually throw them randomly in the kits, whatever we have most of it. This is the main plate made out of 7075 grade aluminum machined. It has channels machined on all four corners and the arms sit there pretty tight and they're like locked. got a bottom plate two millimeter with countersunk holes so the screws are flush and they don't poke through your battery two millimeter top plate you also get one of these 3m rubber battery pads I'm not sure if you can see in the camera, it's already pre-cut to the exact same shape of your bottom plate. Personally, I like the M3 dual lock tapes, but I know a lot of guys use that pad, so we included it. We got two small bags left here. One of them is the micro camera mount and SMA mount. SMA mount does not have RX antenna holes because most of the racers are using Crossfire these days, so we thought this would look better. This is blue, our first batch is blue. The second batch, I'm pretty sure they are a little bit darker. They're more like teal, the hyperlight colors. Here's the final bag. You get four 25 millimeter standoffs, two press fit nuts, steel, four six millimeter M3 screws for top plate, we have here the bottom 16 millimeter countersunk screws, four of them and two 10 millimeter countersunk. So that's everything you get in the bag. Next, I'm gonna show you how to assemble this frame. It's pretty simple, but why not? Let's, let's show in this video how to assemble it too. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the only single tool you will need to assemble this frame is a two millimeter hex driver. So first thing we're gonna do is Put in this press fit nuts. I know a lot of guys are gonna ask us, hey, the nuts are not pressed in the aluminum. How are we supposed to do that? So this is very simple. You use one of the top plate screws, the six millimeter regular button head. Drop the nut where it's supposed to be in the plate there. Hold it with your finger and screw the six millimeter screw from the other end, from the bottom side, and just tighten it all the way down. You will feel the friction, the nut is going in, creating probably grooves in there, and that's it. It's in place. So that's how you press those nuts in the plate. Here's the second one. 
ready. Also, if you ever need to remove a press nut for, for, for any reason, you need that press nut to use somewhere else, you can use a longer screw, like a, one of the 20, 25 millimeter screws that we use for the stacks. Screw it from this side where it's going into the plate and use a plier or anything to, you know, to get leverage and you can just pop it up. Next, we're gonna start putting the arms in. So, that's two arms. Here's the bottom plate. This one has orientation. You can see one side is longer than the other. The long side is the front side. So we're gonna use one of the 10 millimeter countersunk screws. there don't tighten it all the way because you might still need to align the arms a little bit push this in and then the other side and same thing the 10 millimeter counter sunk right so the arms are in place That's why I said don't tighten it all the way because you might have to align the arm back and forth so you know the, the, the holes are aligned. Next we get one of the 16 millimeter counter sunks. And that one goes through the bottom plate, the arm and the aluminum plate. So, as you can see, you have a lot of thread here left that will go in the standoff. Some guys asked me, hey, how come you guys didn't use lock nuts on this one? You don't need lock nuts, believe me. There is a lot of thread goes in there. It's not going to be easy stripping that standoff. So, tighten it as much as you can. It's not easy to tighten all the way because this thing, nothing is holding it from the top yet, but for now, as much as you can. Let's go ahead and do the other four arms as well, the, the other three arms. So there it is. The screws are not tight all the way yet. I will do that once I put the top plate, that way the standoffs are locked in place. I'm going to slide this TPU SMA mount here so you guys have an idea how it looks like on the frame. There you go. And there's the top plate. For this, we're going to use the M3x6 button head screws. one this is the other tree as well okay so now that everything is in place we can go ahead and tighten all screws and there it is zero absolutely zero play in the arms it almost feels like a boomerang arm this is the last piece like i mentioned earlier uh i usually don't use this but let's go ahead and throw it on there as well i don't think this is the best way to do it I'm touching all over that sticky side. So same thing like the bottom plate. 
there's a longer side to it. The longer side goes towards front. There you go. Done.